In this video, we'll be discussing trigonometric ratios of general angles. Given that theta is obtuse and tangent theta is equals to a, express in terms of a. Part 1, cosine theta, and that's a 3 marks question. In part 2, cosecant theta, and that's a 2 marks question. Now, you may want to pause this video to give this question a try, and when you're ready, keep watching. Since theta, as mentioned in the question, is obtuse. So over here, since theta is obtuse. By obtuse angles, we refer to angles that is greater than 90, but lesser than 180 degrees. So theta lies in the second quadrant. So now let's move over to the right hand side of the video where we draw a second quadrant diagram here. So this will be my x-axis and my y-axis. So this is my first quadrant, my second quadrant, third quadrant, fourth quadrant. Since theta is obtuse, theta lies in the second quadrant. We have to draw a right angle triangle in this quadrant. So now let's draw a right angle triangle here. So this is my hypotenuse side of this right angle triangle. And this is my opposite side here. And let's do out some labeling here. This is my positive x-axis. My x-axis, I mean. This is my y-axis. Now let's indicate the angle theta in this diagram. So theta will always start from the positive x-axis all the way to the hypotenuse side of this tri right angle triangle here. So let's do it again. Here. So let's not forget to label the um, arrow heads here implying or indicating the direction of this angle like this. So this is therefore my angle theta with an arrow heads. Now if this is angle theta, then the angle within the right angle triangle will therefore be the basic angle also known as alpha. We're going to label this as basic angle alpha here. So over here in this question, they also mentioned that tangent theta is equal to a. So tangent theta is equal to a. Now as we can see that theta lies in the second quadrant. Now by the a, a, s, t, c methods, now the second quadrant is when sine is positive. Only sine is positive. Tangent must be a negative. So in the second quadrant, tangent theta must be a negative. So now let's indicate here tangent theta must be a negative, so it's less than zero. So if tangent theta must be a negative as theta lies in the second quadrant, then A must also be a negative. So my angle A here, my A in fact, ratio A must be a negative. Now let's um, use the Tuacaso method here to put in the ratio of a. So since tangent theta equals a, let's use the Tuacaso. By Tuacaso, we call it as a, a tangent theta equals to the opposite over the adjacent side of it. So um, now let's put in where is the opposite side of it, a over 1. So this is my opposite side of it, of this right angle triangle here. This line here is the opposite, which is a. And my adjacent, which is here, a 1, this part of it. But there's a big issue. 
even though tangent theta equals to opposite over adjacent, which is in this case a over 1, giving us the a results. Therefore, we answer this question, but it does not fit into this diagram because the side of 1 falls on the negative x-axis. So this must be a negative. That's where a lot of students make these common mistakes. And since this is a negative, to, in order to answer this question, the tangent theta will give us a ratio of a over 1, then this must also be a negative. Now let's not also forget that a is less than 0. A negative a will therefore give us a double negative, giving us a positive value, and this is the positive y-axis by the negative x-axis. So therefore, this part here, negative a, double negative, positive y value, negative 1 here, negative x values here. At the same time, negative a over negative 1 will give us a result of a answers to this question. Now, with having said all that, we have now the opposite and the adjacent side of it. We can now proceed to use the Pagadera's theorem, which is a, a squared plus 1 squared equals to the square of the sides. So the hypotenuse over here, hypotenuse, would therefore be equals to square root of a squared plus 1 squared. Now we have all the three sides. Now let's label the three sides over here in this diagram so that it will be clearer for you to see. So over here is going to be square root of a squared plus 1 that we have found earlier. So this is the hypotenuse side of it. With all three sides found, we can then proceed to use uh, to solve for this question in part 1. In part 1, the question is asking cosine theta Cosine theta using the Dwarkasso method, which in this case the car here. Alright, you can see the car here. So cosine theta, cosine theta will therefore be equals to adjacent. The A in the car refers to adjacent, the H representing a hypotenuse. These are the acronyms for it. So car refers to uh, cosine, A refers to adjacent, and H refers to the hypotenuse side of it. So cosine theta equals adjacent over the hypotenuse. So this is the angle alpha. And uh, the adjacent of it would therefore be this. And the hypotenuse side of it would therefore be this. So it will be negative 1 over square root of a squared plus 1. So negative 1 over square root of a squared plus 1. So this is the answer for part 1. We can then use the same methods to solve for part 2. In part 2, we are asked to solve for cosecant theta. Cosecant theta. So this is a reciprocal trigo function by cosecant theta. Cosecant theta. It refers to 1 over sine theta. Alright, cosecant theta is a reciprocal trigo function of sine theta. So, um, how do I memorize it? Just look at the third letter of this uh, reciprocal trigo function. So, it's a S implying it's a 1 over sine theta. So, 1 over sine theta is easy because we can find our 1 over sine theta here in this case. Alright, so 1 over sine theta, so equals to 1 divided by sine theta. So, what is sine theta? By sine theta, we now use the third um, Dwarkasso, the third acronym here. So, so, which implies a sine theta equals to the opposite, O representing opposite, and H representing the hypotenuse side of it. So, sine theta equals to O over H, opposite over hypotenuse. The opposite is negative A. The hypotenuse is root of A squared plus 1. So, therefore, negative A over root of a square plus 1. Now, basic simple uh, algebraic manipulation would therefore give us a uh, negative root of a square plus 1 over a. 
So this is the answer for the part two.